when most companies say they are using AI for customer service, what they really mean is they have deployed a chatbot with a nice welcome message and a few canned workflows. Klarna, they build something closer to an air traffic control system for conversations, capable of handling two thirds of all customer chats across more than 35 languages and doing the work of 700 full-time agents. And it wasn't just about throwing GPT into production. This was a multi-layered orchestrated system designed for fintech complexity, built to understand context, pull the right data and respond in under two minutes. If you're building or scaling AI power support, stick around. I share deep breakdowns like this every week. AI systems, SaaS architecture, and product strategies that actually scale. Customer service in fintech isn't like retail or travel. You are dealing with high stake issues, money transfer, disputed charges, payment deadlines. Customers want answers quickly, but they also expect absolute accuracy. If you mess up, you do not just lose a sale, you lose trust. Klarna's approach matters because they didn't just choose automation metrics. They built an AI platform that could handle massive scale and operate within the strict reliability, compliance and multilingual demands of a global financial product. And for a while, it worked so well that they cut resolution times from 11 minutes to less than two. But that level of performance didn't happen by choice. It was the result of some smart product-driven engineering decisions that most companies overlook. The unique part about Klarna's AI wasn't just that it could talk, it could orchestrate. They built it on Langraph, a multi-agent orchestration framework that acted as a traffic controller for incoming queries. Instead of sending every customer question through the same giant AI model, Langraph routed each request to specialized agents trained for specific tasks. Payments, refunds, disputes, product queries. And here is why that worked. First, it reduced latency because simple questions didn't need the heavy processing path. Second, it improved reliability by isolating each domain specific task. Box in the refunds flow didn't break payments. It lowered operational cost by not overloading the core LLM with every request. And right behind Langrub was their RAG layer, retrieval augmented generation. This wasn't your typical vector DB plus embedding setup. They had two context feeds going into the LLM. First, vector search results with relevant policy, product, or transaction details. And second, knowledge graph context from their internal AI system, Kiki, that mapped customer history, product uses, and past interactions. And the result, every AI answer could be informed not just by generic documentation, but by that customer's actual relationship with Klarna. But even the smartest orchestration engine is only as good as the data you feed it. And Klarna's real age came from how they re-engineered their internal knowledge before plugging it into AI. Most support AI projects fail because the company's knowledge is catered in docs, old Slack trades, silo tools. Klarna took a different route. They built Kiki, an internal knowledge graph powered by Neo4j, which became the single source of truth for everything the AI might need. What made this different from a simple FAQ database was how they treated it like onboarding a brand new employee every day who knew nothing about the company, that means they had to document every customer service process in detail, including rare edge cases. 
harmonize data from dozens of SAS tools into a single link graph model. Standardized response protocol so AI could follow the same steps as a trained agent. Now it is not glamorous work but it is the foundation for reliable AI. Without it, your model ends up hallucinating or giving inconsistent answers. And in fintech, that's a compliance nightmare. With the orchestration engine in place and the data pipeline clean, the next step was to see how this setup performed under real world load. And that's where Klarna's numbers get interesting. When Klarna flipped the switch on the system in early 2024, the results were immediate. In its first month, the AI handled 2.3 million conversations, covering two-thirds of all support chats. Average resolution time dropped from 11 minutes to under 2 minutes. Repeat queries went down by 25%, meaning the AI wasn't just answering, it was resolving issues on one go. And from business standpoint, this translated into an estimated $40 million improvement in manual profit. Those numbers were not magic. They were the byproduct of smart architectural calls. The multi-agent routing main trivial questions didn't clog the main pipeline. The dual context RH layer gave every answer both procedural accuracy and personal relevance. And Kiki ensured AI always spoke with the same knowledge base a trained human would use. And what I like here is that Klarna didn't try to make the LLM figure out everything from scratch. They front-loaded it with precision, pre-processed queries, curated context, and a memory layer that remembered customer state across terms. That combination is what made it fast and consistent in more than 35 languages across 23 markets. But there is an equally important detail. Klarna didn't just build this as a single giant AI service. They went with microservices on AWS EKS, tied together with Kafka for even driven flows. That gave them the ability to scale individual components independently. If dispute resolution needed more compute during peak hours, they could scale just the service, not the entire AI platform. And they kept that monitoring tight. Using Langsmith for production observability, they track step-by-step -step LLM behavior, latency per agent, and where conversations failed to meet KPIs. That constant feedback loop meant they could adjust prompts routing and knowledge graph entries without redeploying the entire system. And all of this was working so well that Klarna expanded its AI capability from refunds to payment issues to proactive financial guidance and even dispute arbitration. That's not just a typical chatbot use case. Making quasi-judicial calls between customers and marches requires pulling evidence from multiple systems, weighing policy and communicating the decision clearly. This was one of the places where the orchestration and knowledge graph really showed their value. Of course, even the best performing system can hit limits once it's out in the wild. And Klarna stories gets really interesting when you look at what didn't work. And why? That part is just as important for anyone thinking about building a similar AI platform. So where the system hit its limit? On paper, Klarna's AI platform was delivering exactly what the business wanted. Faster resolution, lower headcount cost, and multilingual coverage at scale. But fintech customer service isn't just about speed, it's about trust. And that's where the cracks started to show. The first pain point was nuance loss. The orchestration layer could route queries brilliantly, but intent recognition still stumbled on emotionally charged or ambiguous requests. A customer disputing a late fee after a payment delay caused by a bank outage needed a different tone and reasoning than one disputing an incorrect invoice. 
The AI's answers were factually correct, but they missed the emotional calibration, making frustrated customers feel brushed off. Another issue was novel scenario handling. The RAG layer and knowledge graph worked perfectly for documented cases, but when something new hit the system, a merchant using an unconventional refund process or a customer with overlapping disputes, the AI struggled to improvise. Without a matching data pattern, it defaulted to safe but unhelpful responses. Then there was hand of friction. When an AI escalated to a human, context wasn't always transferred cleanly. Agents sometimes received a bare summary instead of a full conversation thread, forcing customers to repeat themselves. Technically, this was a systems integration gap. AI conversation logs and human support interface were not fully in sync. In practice, it broke the illusion of seamless support. And these were not small-scale annoyances. They showed up consistently enough to affect customer perception. Klarna CEO admitted that cost efficiency had been prioritized a bit too heavily over service quality. A candid acknowledgement that even advanced AI architecture cannot replace human judgment in certain contexts. With these gaps in view, Klarna's product and engineering teams had to make a strategic decision. Keep pushing for full AI autonomy or design the system so AI and humans could complement each other. They chose the latter. Klarna's hybrid model wasn't just add humans back in. They redesigned the architecture to make humans a first-class component of the workflow. The AI still handled trials and all routing queries, anything from checking payment status to initiating standard refunds. But when complexity or emotion spiked, the system switched tracks. AI agents flagged the conversation for human review based on sentiment analysis or unusual query patterns. Escalations came in with full structured context package, conversation transcript, link transactions, policy matches, so the human didn't start from zero. And the orchestration layer treated humans like another specialized agent in Langgraph, meaning they could be invoked dynamically, not just as a last resort. Klarna also innovated on the human side with an Uber-style support workforce. Instead of traditional call centers, they tapped students, rural professionals, and lawyer customers for flexible app-based support roles. This gave them coverage without the cost structure of a fixed in-house team, and it scaled naturally with demand spikes. Technically, this meant the AI platform wasn't replaced it became the gateway. It still did the heavy lifting on speed, multilingual processing, and case preparation, while humans filled the empathy and creativity gap. This shift preserved the platform scalability while restoring the human connection customers valued most. And critically, it kept the data fly wheel turning. Human interaction feed back into Kiki and the RAG layer improving the AI's future responses. The interesting part is Klarna didn't abandon its AI first foundation. They rebalanced it. And that balance is the real takeaway for teams building large-scale AI in customer service. Designed for augmentation, not replacement, right from start. So if there is one thing Klarna proved, it's the large-scale AI customer service isn't just about dropping a model into production. It's about designing the entire system so AI and humans can work together without friction. From a product and architecture perspective, here are the standout lessons. First, data quality before model quality. Klarna's Kiki knowledge graph wasn't built for vanity. It was built so every AI response could draw from verified, structured, and harmonized information. That meant merging siloed systems into a unified data model, documenting every workflow, 
down to age cases and standardizing responses so AI could act like a consistent policy driven agent. So if your documentation and knowledge structure cannot onboard a human from scratch, it will not sustain an AI. Second, specialized orchestration based one model does all. Their use of LangGraph for multi-agent orchestration made it possible to route simple queries to lightweight agents for speed and cost savings and direct complex or regulated cases to domain specific agents and they keep the systems modular so each agent could be tuned or replaced without touching the whole platform. This architecture is what let them scale horizontally without bottlenecks. Third measure the right metrics. Resolution speed and containment rate are not enough. Klarna's early success must gaps in empathy and nuance because those were not being measured. Adding sentiment analysis, intent drift detection and escalation quality scores gave them fuller view of service health. Fourth, treat human escalation as a design problem, not an afterthought. In the hybrid model, the human wasn't plan B. They were defined endpoints in the orchestration graph. Every escalation came with the customer's full context, ready for immediate actions. That's what stopped customers from repeating themselves and preserved the overall service experience. Fifth, keep the feedback loop tight. Human handled cases didn't just solve problems they became new training material. Every resolution updated the knowledge graph, informed future prompt tuning and improved escalation triggers. Without this loop, the AI could plateau. If I were leading a FinTech or SaaS team building AI power support today, I would start with three sequential phases. Phase number one, data and knowledge foundation. Consolidate your knowledge sources. Build a graph-based model if possible. Make sure workflows are documented to the point that a new hire or an AI can handle them without tribal knowledge. Phase two, orchestration and specialization. Implement a controllable agent framework like LangGraph or similar with distinct agent for different problem domains. Use RAG for both vector search and graph context for richer answers. And phase three, hybrid integrations from day one. Design escalation pipelines before launch. Treat human agents as peers in the system architecture, not as a fallback. And ensure every escalation is context rich and bi-directional in learning. Klarna's journey wasn't a straight line from AI launch to customer blaze. It was a cycle. Build, deploy, observe failure points, and re-architect for balance. That's the mindset that separates AI projects that last from those that become expensive experiments. The most important takeaway, AI in customer service isn't about replacing humans, it's about using AI to give humans the space to handle the situation that matter most while letting automation take care of the rest. So if you're building a similar platform, aim for speed and empathy in your design. Build with modularity so you can evolve, measure beyond efficiency and feed every interaction, human or AI, back into your system's knowledge core. This is how you end up with a support platform that doesn't just scale, it learns, adapts and earns over time. And if you want more such deep dives like this, real architecture, real lessons from the field, please make sure you are subscribed. I share breakdowns every week that help SaaS and AITM's build systems worth keeping. Thank you so much for watching.